Imagine that you have an application where you fine tune a foundation model for every single user. How are you going to serve those fine tuned models in production? Let's say you've got thousands of them. How are you going to deploy each of those models and manage them? Well, today I'm going to talk about how to serve 10,000 or more fine tuned large language models on a single GPU. And to do that, we're going to do something called LoRa swapping using a tool called TensorRT LLM. So first off, let's see, first off, what is TensorRT LLM? It is a, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm blocking your view here a little bit. Let me get out of the way there. Awesome. So TensorRT LLM optimizes model inference. You use it to build an engine for a large language model that is optimized for the specific model, sequence shape, batch sizes, quantization, everything that you're going to do in production. And it builds this optimized engine with CUDA kernels and everything that are specifically targeted for your exact use case. And that's going to improve your latency, improve your throughput, time to first token, tokens per second, all that sort of stuff. It's great. And you know, you don't you don't have to use this. You can use VLM, TGI, any of the other options. But these engines um, are a great option for serving models in production. The issue is, you know, each one of these engines has to be built for a specific model. So if you build it for one fine-tuned model, you're going to have to build another one for the next and for the next. And if you're fine-tuning a model for every user, you know, boom, suddenly you've got thousands of these engines, you're scaling GPUs up and down. It's just totally impractical. It wouldn't work. Fortunately, you know, we don't have to do it like that. There's a much better way. So rather than serving every fine-tuned model on its own deployment, what if we could just serve the foundation model, which is like 99% the same with each of these fine-tunes, and then just kind of layer in those fine-tuned models on top of it? Well, it turns out we can if we do our fine-tuning with something called LoRa. What is LoRa? Low rank adaptation. Well, to, to go to a really high level, a large language model is like a set of matrices, basically. These matrices are full of numbers. And a fine-tuned version of an original model is just like the same type of matrix with different numbers in it. We can express that difference um, as a delta matrix. Um, so, you know, if you, if you multiply these two together, um, you, you get your, your outcome, um, your fine-tuned LLM. You know, if... If unlike me, uh, you got a uh, more than a B in linear algebra, then perhaps you can go a little bit more in depth here. But conceptually, this is what we got to understand for, uh, for understanding why laws are so great. Because the issue with this delta matrix is, and, and this output fine-tuned LLM, it's just as big as the original. It's, it's billions of parameters, you know, many gigabytes to, to store and serve. Well, LoRa's, um, a low rank, um, which is where most of the letters in LoRa come from, is low rank, just means that our matrix is going to be a lot skinnier in one dimension. So rather than being this giant matrix, um, we're going to have two smaller ones. Um, and this can, you know, be four or five hundred times fewer parameters um, in practice, oftentimes even less, even, even bigger factor of, of savings on parameters. So this means not only are we fine-tuning hundreds of times fewer parameters, which makes the fine-tuning process faster, we're also storing and loading hundreds of times fewer parameters. LoRa's can actually be as small as, you know, for, for Llama 3, you know, your standard size LoRa is just going to be 16 megabytes compared to, you know, in, in, FP, in FP, uh, FP16, we're looking at like 16 gigabytes for the model itself. So it's like a thousand times smaller. And so what that means is, you know, coming back to our general purpose here that we want to serve many fine-tuned models in a single deployment, um, we can actually get to this architecture. The issue is we can't put too many fine-tunes um, on the GPU itself. You know, the GPU VRAM is very limited in, in size. We need, we need places to keep the model weights, activations, the KV cache, the actual values doing inference. And so because of that, when we want to scale up, we're actually going to keep a LoRa cache in our CPU memory, our host memory. So that's the RAM on the CPU that's attached to the GPU in the model serving instance. Normally, we can't really use this for model stuff because the interconnect between the two is only 10 to 50 gigabytes per second on like a PCIe bus. 
But fortunately, as we discussed, LoRa's are super small. They're only 16 megabytes. So we're able to keep a ton of LoRa's in here, and we're able to, as requests come in from the user, we're able to grab the appropriate LoRa, put it in, fill the request. And actually, thanks to in-flight batching in TensorRT LLM, we can do this on the fly. So basically, each request is coming in, and, and every request to the model can be using a different LoRa at the same time. Um, so it's, pre it's pretty great. Um, it, works, it works well. You can basically serve uh, as, as many different LoRa's as you're receiving requests for and swap them out seamlessly. So I've said that LoRa swapping is fast, and I've said that you can serve a lot of LoRa's. Let's get a you know, little more precise with that. So first off, the time to load one of these 16 megabyte LoRa's from the, from the CPU memory, um, it's only one to two milliseconds. Now, we, we do care about milliseconds. You know, when we're talking about model serving, we're talking about time to first token, usually trying to get that, you know, under 100 milliseconds on the chip, so that's under 200 second, milliseconds when we add the round trip network latency. But given that we're talking about a few hundred milliseconds, one to two milliseconds is, is not going to, you know, materially affect how fast the user perceives your application as. And this load only happens one time. The other thing is now how many LoRa's can we store because we're using this CPU memory um, and swapping them out. Well, for Llama 3.8b on one of Base 10's H100 GPU instances, you can so store as many as 10,000 LoRa's. And there's other places you can store them on network, you can store them on disk, um, and you can, you know, obviously have a larger, like, multi-GPU instance that can serve more of them. But as a rule of thumb, you know, per deployment, we're talking about being able to serve at least 10,000 different fine-tuned models. So if you are trying to serve one model per customer, one model per user, this is a way more efficient method than trying to set up each of these deployments individually. I've written about this in a bunch more detail on the Base 10 blog um, that's going to be linked wherever you're watching this video. It's going to be linked somewhere down below. So definitely take a look at that and see if LoRa swapping could be the answer for your model deployment needs.